she suggested this lazy monk place you heard of. Let's go. We actually didn't find it right away. We had to drive around and since we've been there, we've been telling people and they've been telling people. When I came down here for the first time to Lazy Monk, the atmosphere was so relaxed. It's gorgeous in here. I felt comfortable. I felt thirsty. <laughs> Uh, we came to Lazy Monk tonight because um, they're from out of town, they're from Minneapolis, so I wanted to show them what this brewery uh, has to offer and uh, have some beer. What's nice about Lazy Monk compared to other Twin Cities breweries is uh, the atmosphere. I mean, you feel like you're in Germany, whereas um, the other, like, there's really not one like that in the Twin Cities. Yeah, the decor nice. really makes a difference. Yeah. So the beer is good, and they always are open to our suggestions. They have polls asking about um, what they would like us to make for their next beer. Somebody that I don't know, I would bring down here. It'd be fun. It would make me. It would make me seem cool. My name is Lars Frank, and I'm brewer at Lazy Monk Brewing. I met my wife 20 years ago. I uh, grew up in what it used to be Czechoslovakia. At some point, I uh, lost my job in IT and uh, I just got this crazy idea to open a brewery, and that was four years ago. First, uh, nobody really in this area thought about the tap rooms at all. But then when we were open about a year, a friend of mine visited me and he said, well, I went down to North Carolina and uh, they have this thing, they call it uh, tap room, and it's a production brewery, and they have a, a portion of the brewery, it might not be a fancy place, where they actually they try to uh, dispense their beer to, directly to customers. We started to do tap room more from a marketing perspective, and it was, well, if people will associate Lazy Monk, we don't have a building, and uh, the, our equipment is not that, that fancy, so let's, let's make it that they would associate our brewery with a, with a tap room. And when we started, we made it 450 square feet, and the people were coming back and back. So uh, a year later, we decided that we are going to double the space, and uh, you build it and they'll come. What we, we wanted to recreate beer halls from Europe, you know, from, from Germany and Czech Republic. That's why we, we decided to do it this way, you know. Uh, as well as the room was very nice, it had a lot of uh, natural light and uh, was quite inviting with uh, brick uh, on the walls. We just made it uh, to look like with the molding that it is actually uh, more as a Tudor style. So we wanted, as, as when people come here, they would feel that they've been transformed to, to a, you know, still comfortable place, but something a little bit different. We did not necessarily design the size or the shape of the tap handle, but uh, we like it because it looked like a Pilsner glass, and a Pilsner is our flagship. So it, I think it works quite well. We started with, uh, with our Bohemian Pilsner on, uh, on one side because I'm coming from Czechoslovakia, so it was actually beer I grew up with. Uh, um, it is, uh, it's a lager beer uh, that was first brewed in uh, Pilsen, Czech Republic. And then uh, if you are actually in Czechoslovakia, well, it's split right now in Czech Republic and Slovak Republic, you still can find those kind of style beers there. Actually, they are the mostly what people, people drink there. Uh, they are lagers beers, uh, means that uh, you need to ferment them at a colder temperature. And it takes uh, just a little bit more time to make and mature those beers than uh, ales. And different yeast will perform a little bit different in different temperatures or in different vessels understand what you have and try to use it to, to your advantage. Not a lot of breweries are brewing uh, lagers, uh, craft brewers. Uh, they brew mostly ales. And uh, I also uh, thought it was a distingu distinguishing factor uh, uh, you know, to brew lagers instead of just ales. Well, I know we like IPAs and pale ales a lot. So to not see that is, uh, you know, like, oh, I want one. but. They have really good beer anyway, so it's nice to try something different. It's good to have the, the different, you know, variety. Like, most people are accustomed to the pale ales, and so to be able to only choose from a lager kind of throws you right into the culture. The main driver is the tap room, uh, and uh, people still want to come there. Uh, so uh, that's where we get the biggest margin 
uh, but we think that also distribution, uh, I call it packaged goods, uh, so that would be in grocery stores and liquor stores, is still very important because uh, it uh, tap room and, uh, and packaged goods, they balance each other out. Uh, actually, the growlers, we made it that uh, we made them returnable. It is actually a lot of people, they, they do the uh, 12 ounce uh, six packs and uh, I do not necessarily like 12 ounce serving. Uh, when you have one, that's not enough, and when you when you have two, it's too much. <laughs> so that's why we decided to go to non-traditional package. Uh, I found a can, and it was uh, it was a pint, so it was fairly close to a uh, half a liter. Uh, so it was uh, good serving size, and um, then we we went with the cans. There are two portions of the the canning process, and one is to to fill the can. When you, when you fill the can, uh, at the time, actually, you, you fill it more as a draft. Uh, you just pour the beer in there, and the ways the challenge is that you pour the beer in a can without foaming. The smoked bock I had tonight was amazing. I kind of feel like you're going to Cheers, like everybody knows your name, it's a small place. You show up as uh, strangers and leave as friends. Well, thank you very much for, for coming and visiting us. And uh, uh, when you guys have a time, come on to a tap room and uh, enjoy our beer.